All things were made through him. All things were made for him. And he reconciled all things to God through the blood of his cross. Paul tells the Colossians the whole paradoxical story of Jesus Christ. The Son of God, the Word of God, the second person of the Trinity who was with God and was God in the beginning became flesh and died on the cross. He suffered and died there for the reconciliation of all things. Of all the beings God made through him and for him, human and non-human alike. And he continues to be present with all who suffer. Therefore, we who have been entrusted with the same ministry of reconciliation must care as he does for all that lives on the earth. When we take on the ministry of reconciliation, we enter into the mystery of Christ in us. We enter into the hope of glory. A few minutes from now, will affirm our faith in the only begotten Son of God, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. In the letter to the Colossians, Paul expands that affirmation into a glorious hymn to the one who is before all things, in whom all things hold together. Just try to absorb or better yet, to feel what it means for all things to hold together in the one who became incarnate in Jesus Christ. Look at the people all around you. They hold together in God's only begotten. Remember the trees you passed by on your way to church this morning, the light of the sun, the air that you've been breathing in and out, it's God's only begotten who sustains them, who holds them all together. The prologue to John's gospel says that the word that became flesh in Jesus is the light and the life of all people. Paul takes that awe-inspiring thought one step further and affirms that the word, the only begotten, is the light and life of all people things, not just human beings. In our baptismal vows, we promise to respect the dignity of every human being. The biblical roots of that promise run deep. Every person you'll ever meet is made in the image of God, and their life and light is the word who became flesh. That gives us a special dignity a unique value. But if all things were created through him and hold together in him, then all things, not just human beings, have a dignity that commands our respect. And Paul goes even further. He says that all things hold together in the only begotten through whom they were created. And what's more, all things were created for the one who took flesh in Jesus Christ. All things, not just human beings, were created for the one who became a human being. The incarnation was God's plan all along. Even if human beings had never sinned, God would have entered into creation for the sheer love of the world. That's why God made the world in the first place. God made the world as a recipient for the greatest gift God could give, God's own self, intimately present as a being within the world. God became incarnate as a human being, one more reason for the special dignity we enjoy. But God's gift of God's self in Jesus Christ is a gift to all things, to all the beings, made through and for God's only begotten. And so all things, especially all living things, have their dignity from God, 
a dignity we are bound to honor. And look where all this glory leads to. The one through whom and for whom all things were made, in whom all things hold together, makes peace through the blood of his cross. Yes, the incarnation was the plan from the beginning, whether we sinned or not. But we did sin. And we do sin. So the drawing near, which would have happened anyway for love's sake, becomes a sacrificial act of reconciliation for love's sake. Colossians and the Nicene Creed both move from pre-incarnate glory to death on the cross. First, we proclaim the only begotten of one being with the Father through whom all things were made, and then we proclaim his incarnation from the Virgin Mary. And then we proclaim that for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Here again, Paul takes it one step further. In the creed, we say that Jesus was crucified for our sake. But Colossians says that through the blood of the cross, God was pleased to reconcile to God's self all things. All things, whether on earth or in heaven. The flock of birds that rises up out of the trees at sunset. The foxes and the rabbits. Even the cockroaches in the kitchen. All are reconciled to God through the blood of the cross. In the letter to the Romans, Paul says that the whole creation is groaning in labor pains, waiting for the day when it will be set free from its bondage to decay so that it can enjoy the freedom of the glory of the children of God. What fools we are when we try to set ourselves apart from the natural world. We were made together with the rest of creation through and for God's only begotten. And the one through whom and for whom we were made died on the cross to reconcile us to God together with the rest of creation. More wonderfully still, Christ, the light and life within all that lives, continues to suffer with us as we suffer. If you've ever sat beside the bedside of someone in pain, you know that all your prayers and pious assurances pale in significance beside the simple fact of your presence. What a suffering person needs to feel above all is that they are not alone. And none of us is ever alone when we suffer because Jesus suffers with us. And he suffers with the whale choking to death on our plastic waste with the orangutan whose habitat is destroyed to make way for a palm oil plantation. When suffering humanity is set free in the final restoration of all things, that whale and that orangutan will be set free along with us because it is none other than the firstborn of all creation through whom and for whom all things were made that suffered for us and suffers with us until he comes again. Christ suffers for us, and Paul suffers for Christ. What's more, Paul rejoices in his sufferings. Now, of course, he's not saying that he enjoys suffering, but then what can this rejoicing be about? It's not the suffering itself that gives Paul joy, but his ministry for the sake of the church. The suffering that ministry involves becomes a source of joy because Paul has been given the privilege of proclaiming the gospel. Christ's afflictions have become Paul's afflictions because Paul is carrying on Christ's ministry of reconciliation. But it's not just Paul who's been given that ministry. It's every member of the body of Christ, including you and me. Paul says as much in the second letter to the Corinthians. 
If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to God's self and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. God gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We are sent, as Christ was, and as Paul was, to reconcile all things to God. We're sent to reconcile human beings to one another and to reconcile humankind and the earth. In a way, these are two different ministries because most people who take up the ministry of reconciliation will focus on one or the other. If you support a shelter for victims of domestic violence or participate in a feeding ministry or work for an end to war, you're focused on the reconciliation of human beings with one another. And if you work to preserve a wildlife sanctuary or to promote the transition to sustainable energy or to advocate for climate justice legislation, you're focused on the reconciliation of humanity with the earth. But these apparently distinct ministries of reconciliation are really aspects of one ministry. They depend on one another. We cannot reconcile human beings to one another so long as the poor are denied the basic rights of clean water and clean air. And when the changing climate causes floods and famines in the nations that are least able to respond to such catastrophes. And we cannot reconcile humanity to the earth so long as a privileged minority consumes most of the world's resources and generates most of the world's waste while the rest of humanity is starved for resources and burdened with waste. We may take up different parts of the ministry of reconciliation, but it's one ministry. Christ has reconciled all things to God. And so we too, who have been given the ministry of reconciliation, must work and rejoice and suffer for the good of all life on earth. Jesus Christ, through whom and for whom all things were made, has reconciled all things to God. He gave up his life for us, and he gives us as a gift to the world to carry on his ministry of reconciliation. Our ministry, like his, extends to all that lives. Let us embrace this gift, the mystery of Christ in us, let us embrace the hope of glory. Amen.